Let me tell you, I worked at the jail for six years, and uh, it was it's just amazing to see so many young black men being shipped off to the penitentiary every day. I used to honestly feel my stomach coming up, maybe a couple hundred guys off to the penitentiary every day. Even if it wasn't just necessarily my body being black people or Mexican, it's just anybody. Just to see that was just, it was just disturbing. I just wondered, like, how do those numbers get that high, you know? Our plan of attack is to hit the South Jets first. We have gotten plenty of guns out of there, as everybody knows, and a lot of drugs. We're going in the housing authority, so make sure everybody has police markings on. Watch your backgrounds and stay with your partners, all right? Any questions? All right, let's go. Number one, Logan. There's certain areas of the suburbs more so than others that we hit with regularity, and frankly, it's because it's where the action is. I used to be a prosecutor before I became sheriff, and I used to try a lot of cases out here where, unfortunately, these problems have been going on since the uh, late 80s. You see neighborhoods that never change, that are as compromised as ever, with limited opportunities for the kids to grow up here. I mean, if you walk out the door of one of these buildings every single day to head off to school, and you see this activity, what do you think you're going to think of as far as your options in life? Many people's options dried up decades ago on Chicago's south side and in the south suburbs. Abandoned steel mills and empty lots serve as reminders of what used to be a thriving community. Now the criminal element that took root in those areas is spreading to the near west suburbs 10 miles from downtown. It's right in your face. We have four different gangs in this area. Come in, yo. Green, come here. They feel like they can come out here and hide and get away with what they need to. What about you? Who you ride with? But gangs aren't the only ones selling drugs for a living out here. What's up, boss? Today, sheriff's police investigators are pursuing a very different kind of target. A middle-class white female who allegedly traffics cocaine to support her family. She's been a dealer for a long time. She sells large amounts and she hasn't been caught. The informant says she's really smart. She may see the, the undercover and say, nah, I don't want to deal with them. So we'll see if it works. And this is just a A buy. Yeah. This is just a buy, buy, let go. Okay. Their informant has agreed to set up a deal and introduce an undercover officer to the target. But he's a self-admitted addict working for money, which makes him difficult to trust. What's important? That intro, man. You gotta say, you gotta sell my guy. Hey, man, this is my. Call him your cousin. Can you say? Did you say it's related to you yet or not? No, I no. This, hey, this is your cousin. If, hey, you make sure you take care of my cousin. Blah blah blah. You gotta sell him up. He's kind of hard headed. We're trying to coach him what to say, and he's not doing it the way we're telling him to do it. And then he's all nervous. No, no. Hey, this is this is it right here. You got to sell her today. This is my cousin. He's always been up for me. He took care of me when I was locked up, so I want you to make sure you take care of him. If you sell it like that, that should be good, man. You know what I mean? Cousin or brother? Well, cousin is better, right? Okay. All right? Okay. I find myself with him that I always have to keep reminding him that, hey, this is the way we have to do it. If you're not going to do it the way we want it done, then we, don't, we won't use you. The informant, whom we'll refer to as Nixon, manages to follow orders and completes the intro and drug buy. They're doing the deal right now. We got a business. That's her this, in this white car coming this way. Good deal. He'll call back. He can call back later tonight and say, hey, my cousin, you know, he really like that product. Can he come back tomorrow? And that's how it works. He says that we arrest her. She'll flip. She hasn't been arrested in about 10 years. This is all she's doing. She's obviously got a pretty good connection. We'd sure like to find out who that is. And so hopefully we can get a good case going and uh, see what goes from there. Well, what if you did an 
like intro if you brought if you brought a guy through in the car or whatever like man my guy wants to buy 20. handling informants is more like an art than a science investigators never know if or when a confidential source will turn on them so far this former inmate roosevelt is making good on his word he's identified the leader of a twenty thousand dollar a day narcotics ring on the city's west side we gotta get security who's security Everybody? Everybody? It's an impossible neighborhood to sit on. They got guys on both ends with binoculars watching for police. They don't know you. You don't get served there. If somebody from that block doesn't bring you through, you're not going to get served. That means authorities need Roosevelt on the block to tell them who's coming and going with the payloads of drugs and money. I just see them keep going in and out of houses. Whatever they stay, it's it. The only thing I got to do is just watch. Their first step, doing reconnaissance with Roosevelt the next day. Our informant is going to be calling out real-time information to Sandman and Gleason, so they're going to be directing everybody where they need to go. Their goal is to get an eye on the ringleader. All we're doing this morning is seeing what time he's leaving his house, who he's dropping off to on the block. If he leaves there, maybe we'll follow him to a couple different places, and then we're done. That guy's uh, sitting on the block. Got a guy on this corner right here. These guys are working for sure. It's the beautiful West Side, Chicago. Today's all about intel, and that's why we got our guy out on the block so he can call it out to us so we can keep a very loose perimeter. He can give us his exact location and it just looks like he's on the phone talking to anybody else. Sammy. Go ahead. We just seen him come out the alley, so I believe he's looking to see who's got packs already. This block, this area, this dope line, these guys are out early in the morning um, getting their hustle in. So here, here's one of your fiends right in front of us. White guy definitely does not live in this area, so he's out looking for He already copped. The heroin addicts get up early. They need that as soon as they get up. It's like coffee for them. It's right about the time, too. These kids should be walking to school or getting out here to catch the bus. So we're going to have a mixture of foot traffic. Unfortunately, it's going to be kids and dope fiends. As surveillance teams continue circling the area, their informant phones in updates over the next two hours. San is 20 in Chicago Avenue. So our main target is on the block. He's not working, but he is supervising the product out there right now. But when Roosevelt reports that the dope hustlers are getting suspicious because he's not buying or selling anything, investigators call him off the block. Everyone head back to CIU. Everybody. One undercover unit takes a quick drive past the target on their way out. There's our guy right there with the burgundy hat on, burgundy hoodie. Did they even ask him if he wanted to work or they asked if he was ready to work? Yeah, you ready, you want to work? He says, yeah, probably later on. So, you know, he said he said that they kind of flag him a little bit like, man, what are you doing out here? Just heat up the block. They don't want guys just hanging out to hang out. While authorities weigh their options, their informant says he's willing to go back on the block. That way, he can help undercover officers make dope buys there. Oh, I don't look at him as it's dangerous. It's just a job. But I understand you got your own decisions in life, you know, and hopefully you go the right way. Because the jail's going to always be here in the cemetery. You only got one time to go there change your life, but if not, you'll keep getting the same results.